Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. And it's another episode on the leaky E90. So this lovely thing, oh my God. It was testing me yesterday, it was testing me yesterday. So yesterday morning, the video on the water pump went live and um, as that video ended, you could see that we worked out that it was gonna need an oil filter housing gasket. So, no biggie, oil filter housing gasket, done a few of them now. I thought 10, 20 minutes, I was being optimistic, but yeah, we'll get that changed over. Unfortunately, it turned into a bit more of a job than I was anticipating. In fact, I have a quick clip, which I will cut in now, of some of the action from about lunchtime yesterday. So I didn't actually plan on recording this because it's an oil filter housing gasket, it should be pretty straightforward. But I thought I'd share the joy I'm having. Um, for some reason, somebody's done these bolts up, mate, holding the main oil filter housing on so tight, I can't get them off. Interestingly, the gasket on the oil cooler, this one here, is in very good condition. Uh, that one has been changed recently. I've never seen one that good, but we're obviously still getting a lot of oil dripping down a lot of oil. Um, now, normally I crack this bottom one with an E10 and then you can get it out with your fingers. You don't even need, normally need to remove the coolant pipe. Uh, however, the E10 spanner did not work. It actually, it's torn up the head on the bolt. So before I try again, I'm actually gonna heat this up. Uh, this is not going well. And as I've taken the coolant pipe off, it's broken off in the block. So that's not great. What I thought would be a quick 10 minute job is probably going to be a day of messing around now trying to get parts, getting this back together. So yeah, I um, was struggling to get the oil filter housing off. I got the cooler off, but couldn't get the actual main housing off the head off. Um, I don't know if it's just never been taken off, but the bolts were pretty much seized. I could get, well actually the, the main issue was that front one that I was trying to show you in the iPhone video with the spanner. I ended up getting that off with an E11 socket, uh, which was one that was too big because the E10 spanner actually tore the head on the bolt. But yeah, we, we managed to get it off, but unfortunately I did damage that coolant pipe. Now that is that that plastic that has failed, that's a pretty common failure point. People upgrade them to the aluminium ones. Um, I don't have an aluminium one, but I did have the coolant pipe that come off the E90 parts car. See, I try and keep everything, um, which was this pipe just here. Now, obviously it had the original metal band or it's not, a, it's not an actual clamp. What's well, this here? There's no join in it, but that's how that plastic piece is held into the original hose. And I didn't want to cut that, so I was originally just going to fit the entire hose from the parts car. This hose is in pretty good condition, no biggie. I literally spent a good half an hour trying to work out if I could get that hose off the thermostat. You can't even see it. Working out if I get the hose off the thermostat, ended up giving up. And what I've ended up doing to try and speed up yesterday's pain was actually cutting the metal bit off of this hose fitted a hose clamp so it's got the original hose but with the new plastic end however i am going to need to order an aluminium one because that plastic one that's off the parts car is probably not going to last very long either but i think it does seem to be sealing so i did get both the main oil filter well actually the main oil filter housing gasket now i reckon this is where most of our oil was coming from this gasket has gone hard and brittle you can see it's cracked as i've pulled it out but the front oil cooler one has definitely been replaced recently in fact that i mean that looks brand new what i reckon's happened somebody's had a go at changing the oil filter housing gasket and they couldn't get the actual oil filter housing gasket off so they've just done the oil cooler um but ran into more issues so yesterday um I did another sort of 10, 15 minutes of just idling the car on the hoist to see if we still got any oil leaks. Now when we did that with the water pump checking for coolant leaks, we actually had a pretty good pile, a pretty good pile of oil, puddle of oil, <laughs> my God, a pretty good puddle of oil uh, in that 10 or 15 minute period. And after running it last night, we do not have any oil, but let me show you a few things. So. We are still getting a little bit of weeping off of the oil pan. Although I'm starting to wonder how much of that is just residue. I did, get, did, uh, I did give everything a really good degrease yesterday during the day as well. Trying to get as much oil off of this beast as I can because it is just so coated in it. Um, but when I was running it yesterday, I managed to see, I don't know if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but just on the top oil lines up there, We've got oil leaking out of the oil filter housing gasket again. Let me just lower the car down. Um, annoyingly, it's not those two gaskets that I replaced yesterday. It is 
The third gasket on the oil filter housing, one I've never actually seen needed to be replaced before. So let me get it down and I'll show you what it is. So the engine bay is looking relatively clean. Actually, I might just take this off for now because we don't need it on for a few minutes. Oh, shit. Bloody hell. Um, oh my God, knocking everything over. Um, I did fit some DCIs. This car actually come with a pair of DCIs. They're the BRSF ones. They look pretty much brand new. I thought I'd fit them because I like the noise. And I reckon they make the cars go faster in Queensland. Um, but yeah, it is actually leaking out of this seal here, which is the thermostat seal. Now I did get a photo of it. What? Oh God. Bonus trust falling down. I did get a photo of it just after I finished running it yesterday and I'll try and overlay that. But what we're gonna do in today's video is replace the oil thermostat gasket. Now you wouldn't believe it. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys do know about the zero to 60 memberships, but we have a little crew of about 10 people that um, pay us $30 a month and we really appreciate that. They are in a special Telegram group and I stay in touch with those guys quite a lot. Matt, the legend from that group, I kid you not, three days ago said he's getting these seals made. Do we want to keep some in stock to chest before he starts selling them to the masses? I said, yeah, send them up. That'd be great. They arrived this morning and they are the seal for the thermostats. Couldn't believe it. So we'll get one of Matt's seals put in and uh, give it a test, make sure it works. And I might change your bonnet struts because that hit me on the head twice yesterday as well. I love BMWs. Whoa. One camera angle, one handed camera action, I should say. All right, steal some more parts off this car. And these have been regassed. I guess they didn't know you could buy them for like $30, $40. All right, so we got the two second hand bonnet struts fitted. And we now have a bonnet that stays up. Things are looking up, literally up. All right, so um, I've never actually taken one of these off before. Looks like we've got two Torx bits. Let's get that piece taken off and we'll have a look inside and see what that gasket looks like. Probably make more mess of oil as well. So I'm not sure if any oil is gonna come out, but in an attempt to try and keep my massively cleaned bay a bit cleaner, I'll put that rag down there. Oh, no. there we go. Huh. So we've learned something, you need to undo that one before you take these off. Bugger. I guess I'll put that back on. And yeah, I don't know if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but you can see it's got the typical, it's just perfectly flat across, across there. It looks like it's got a standard thermostat in there. I'm not gonna disturb that, but yeah. And also you can see where it was leaking down yesterday. Let's see if we can get this gasket out. Hmm. Might need two hands. Oh. It's so flat. Huh. So the new ones, and it is rock hard. Yeah, there we go. Well, let's hope to God this is the last of the major oil leaks so we can start actually doing some proper testing in this car. It's gone in there perfectly. Might just wipe the cover down while we're here. Same on this face. Make sure all the ceiling surfaces are as clean as possible. We'll get it back together and start her up. So that was literally a two minute swap over and I tried to wipe away all the excess oil that was there. Um, now I was just gonna start it straight up now, but what I might do is a quick oil flush. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna film that, but I'm gonna basically just run some oil through it whilst we do that startup, and then I'll change it again and I'll put a new oil filter in after we know there's no leaks. Well, no, no significant leaks. I'll get on with it. 
Right, so I can't remember exactly what I filmed last time, but I ended up filling the, we ended up draining the oil that was in this and it smelt like tar. And I filled it up with five liters of Newlon 5830. It was just on sale at the parts store yesterday and then topped it off with that. Basically just some cheap oil that we had laying around. So I've put about $20 worth of oil in it to do a flush. Now I wanted to do that because I don't think this has been overly well serviced and that was based on the amount of crap and I've just I've tried to wipe that off like I need to take this cap off and actually just look at all this gunk that's in the rocker cover like how bad is it that's all in there um that's kind of scary um <laughs> I don't really know the best way to go about that because the more we use this, the more of that is gonna get broken off and get down into the oil. I think we're really just gonna to have to be super on top of oil changes. Now, I haven't actually run a proper oil flush and the reason I didn't wanna do those because they will, like an actual detergent that's designed to really clean everything out may dislodge too much at once. So I'm trying to be careful. Um, now I did manage to spill a lot of oil when I took the oil filter out. Now that oil filter was out yesterday and I did reuse it. And did we have it out the other day as well? Oh, I can't remember. But I was, I basically reused the oil filter that came in the car yesterday. Well, we hadn't changed the oil, but I took it out today and had a closer look at it. Now this is one of those plastic housing oil filters made in South Korea. Um, and like I said, I'm just not super ecstatic with them. You can see how it's sort of crushed down. But the really scary thing is, hopefully you can get it on the GoPro, you just see shimmers of light. It's worn, there it is there. It's literally worn through. That is scary. So on the cage that the filter sits over, it's it's been rubbing enough and it's been in there long enough that it's worn through the filter. So yeah, this engine's been running without a proper oil filter for God knows how long. It's got a Rencal Motors service sticker from 2018 on it. Um, I wouldn't have thought they'd use the plastic end filters, but you never know. Um, yeah, so I mean, it must have been serviced in the last couple of years, but I don't know, don't know the exact mileage. But yeah, kind of scary. Anyway, it's now got HPR 5 in it, 6.5 litres. I've gone straight to 6.5 litres. I'm basically going to run it now. We'll see if we fix the oil leak on the thermostat housing and we'll see if it sounds any different. Um, obviously, the oil that's been in it is pretty bad. Let's see what it sounds like. Little bit of a rattle on startup, but that could have been just because it was low on oil pressure. Engine sounds okay. Well, no different to before. All right, I'm gonna let it get up to temperature and I'll give you an update shortly. So I just thought I'd show you, it's actually the engine sounds quieter now. And I reckon the plastic oil filter was making a noise. It used to sound like it had a bit of an alternator noise. But she is quiet. And no oil dripping out of the housing. We might be good on the leaks. All right, I'm gonna let it get fully up to temperature. Oh, actually it is quite warm still. It may have been holding heat from when I ran it before. But basically, I'll make sure we get temperature on the oil temp gauge and then we'll put it up in the air and we'll just see what the oil leak situation is. Um, yeah, basically, I just want to get it sort of semi-safe to drive on the road. I don't want it spitting out oil everywhere. A little bit of a week I can live with. Um, because tomorrow we've got to go and get some new front tyres fitted. All right, so we got oil temp into it. Let's give it a bit of a rev. Not too many weird noises. In fact, I'd say no weird noises at all. It's quite responsive, to be fair. But I am gonna take it super easy for the drives and just, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of worried about lumps of carbon becoming dislodged and damaging a tappet or lifter or something. Bit of a weird one. No plumes of smoke. 
Mm, nothing leaking off the bottom there. We could be we could be good for a, a trip into town. Let's get it up in the air and have a look. All right, let's have a. Actually, we'll get a light. Let's do it properly. So, how bad have we got down here? Nothing too bad. Still leaking out of. I assume it's the oil pan. It's either the oil pan or the rear rear main seal. Can we just pray it's the oil pan, everyone? Because we will do a pan gasket. We, it will have. This will have a massive birthday. This car. Um, but yeah, I just want to sort of get some road miles on it and just see how good or bad different parts of it are before we spend sort of thousand bucks on parts on maintenance. So there's a little bit around the water pump there, but it's not like oil. It's that's degreaser. So that's fine. That's just residue from degreasing. But I'm getting pretty happy with this. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good to take it into town to get the tire sorted. Excellent. Guys, bit of a mission this one's been. Took a lot longer than I thought it would just to do an oil filter housing gasket. Please let me know your thoughts on our lovely friend here. The see-through uh, oil filter. That is... Look at that. That is madness. You need to change your oil more frequently. This is a, these are performance cars. Well, any sort of late model Beamer. Ah, all right, I ended off there. Thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, a little bit more nervous about this car. Let me know your thoughts on the best way to try and clean all of that built up carbon and crap out of the engine. Other than I'm thinking I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna try and not boost on it, try. Um, definitely not going to wind any more power into it um, and just try and do two or three oil changes and make sure she's solid before we uh, before we go crazy with it because the amount of crap that's in there is it's scary it's scary shout out to Matt for very conveniently sending these test gaskets um, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did say he's got them on eBay so if there is a link I will put a link down to those but yeah that was our last little major oil leak who would have bloody thought thermostat gasket Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Hopefully have some S62 updates either tomorrow or the following day. Um, but until the next one, we'll catch you then. Peace.